by God's wonderful grace and mercy and through the Holy Spirit's guidance we have been making progress with our lesson that has to do what God has already done for us that is he has already granted us the justification by faith has already restored us to a new relationship through what God has done in his son our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and uh, we have really been granted that wonderful should we say relationship and God wants us to know what he has already established for us all and so this is a continuation from what we've learned uh, in the past week and uh, maybe uh, also before of all of the spiritual benefits the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. What he did enables you and me and all of us to enjoy God's justification, God's sanctification, God's blessings upon our lives. So let us continue. We go first to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21, all to remind us of where we are spiritually as Christians. And uh, again, it is just a wonderful testimony of God's grace upon our lives. So here is the Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul, writing to the church at Ephesus and all churches around the world. What did he write to them? He says, starting from verse 17, he says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit. 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord 20 giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ 21 what did he say submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Amen. What we have just heard is also a commandment to all Christians. We are being reminded from what we've already heard that we should not be, if I may use the word, foolish, unwise, unreasonable. But we are to be understanding, reasonable, based upon what the will of the Lord Jesus Christ is. He wants us to be united. He wants us to have that relationship, that fellowship that enables us to be energized. Because when we are all connected in Christ, what we say, what we do, what we are involved with, enables us to receive more power, more protections from God. Because if you are praying for me, I am praying for you, I am praying for her, I am praying for him, I am praying for everyone. The power of God is energized. There is energy in us. 
So we pray we will be able to apply them to our lives. However, when we hear what he commands, he commands us, it's a commandment actually, verse 18 of Ephesians 5 says, And be not drunk with wine. It could be any other drink. It doesn't have to be just wine. It could be any drink. God wants us to have a sound mind, a sound heart. Everything should be properly orchestrated or done so that nothing is done in any way that is against the will of God. What does he say? If we are drunk with wine, then he says there's excess. There are things that won't be done properly. If we drink a lot of drinks, wine, alcohol, and all those things, by the way, alcohol is a no-no. Wine, there are different types. The way it is fermented, what is done, can make anyone drunk. We know. But we also know about alcohol, which is something we should be careful for. So God's reminder is that we should rather be filled with His Holy Spirit. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, everything we do, everything we are interacting with, everything we are going about, it doesn't have any problems. Whether it's my brother, my sister, my father, mother, sister, anyone else, there's always that Come already as how you said love relationship all of these things enable us to be prayerful for one another help one another concern about the others and we are doing it because of the spirit the holy spirit who controls us and manages us and enables us to fulfill the will of god and when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, what happens? Then verse 19 is reminding us that we are able to speak to one another using God's word. In what? Psalms and hymns. So what we say to our brother, sister, father, mother, relatives has to be all guided by what is in the Holy Scriptures. He says, speaking to yourselves, one another. How? In Psalms. Because if we have the whole Psalm and we are meditating upon it and sharing it and reminding ourselves of what he says, that is wonderful. It shows that we have been redeemed. We have been purchased. We have been bought through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we go about doing things according to the spirit that is in us. That means the Holy Spirit. And that's why he says spiritual songs. If we have the Holy Spirit... Why should we be singing other songs, worldly songs, that people sing? Some of them are singing when they are drunk. Some of them are doing things all because of the flesh. God says, no. We have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hymns and spiritual songs. How are we to do it? We are supposed to be singing and making melody. So if we have a word from the hymns, from the psalms, from anywhere that we want to meditate upon, we want to sing, we want to repeat, that is fine. Singing 
and making melody we, from what we've already heard. We can sort of revise it to praise God. Melody in your heart, in my heart. Right? That's what God is saying. Oh, not just in my heart. It's because of the Lord. Right? Singing and making melody in your heart. To who? To the Lord. When we are singing and we are singing to, uh, you know, all these worldly things, God says it has to be to the Lord. 20 says we should be giving thanks always. If you are giving thanks to God always, you know, do you have an opportunity to be angry, to be frustrated, to be doing other things? No. Everything you do is all guided, controlled, orchestrated, if we can use that, you know, with the Holy Spirit. That's why he's warning us, should I say, commanding us, giving thanks always. Are we giving thanks always or sometimes? Or only when the person is nice to me or doing things that, is, that I like? God says giving thanks always. Well, of course, when we say, well, so there's no... No, it doesn't mean that 24 hours a day. It mean, you can rest, you can do other things. But when things come to your mind, oh, you point it to God. Say, thank God. You know, of course, we know we cannot be saying, thank God, thank God, thank God, all throughout. We have to do other things and all that. But still, we have to have that in the background of our mind that it is always has to be in accordance with God's will. And when we are motivated by God's will, God's word, God's uh, meditation in our hearts and minds, mm -hmm. then that is wonderful. Verse 20 again, giving thanks always. How? For all things. It's not something, everything. But we are not to do it for ourselves, right? We are doing it unto God. And the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do we see the commandment? A wonderful commandment. And so, yes, we are in this world. I may say something that may offend you. My brother, my sister, my mother, my father, my neighbor may say something that may offend me make me angry. Yes, we are humans. We can be angry. We can, uh, you know, not be happy about what another brother or sister has said. But there's a warning. God says, be angry. But don't allow the sun to go down. So, in this case, somebody may say, well, it's, it happened in the evening. The sun is already down. Yes. But God is saying that don't, don't massage it. Don't keep it in your mind. If something happens, well, pray. Let the sister, the brother, the mother, father, whatever I know, okay, you know what you said, I wasn't happy and all that and this and that. And then, oh, sorry about that. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. That should end. But if it goes over a month, a month, year, years, then we need to be careful. We need to ask God, am I in obedience to your will, to your commandment? We know there are people they are Christians, if I may say. And I know, personally know, some. It's been years. Oh, I'm not 
going to talk to her anymore of what she did, of what he did. And they are allowing the works of the flesh to control them, which is not God's will. But remember, what we are learning again has to do with the fruit of the Spirit, what God has done for us, how He has justified us, how He has upgraded us into a new level where everything we do should be showing the fruits of our union, the relationship with Christ. Because we have been elevated, we have been brought into a new relationship with Christ. And everything we do from now on, or from the past year or two or three years ago, or you know, since the New Testament was created, the scriptures tell us that Christ came to redeem us. And if he has redeemed us and justified you and me, then our interaction with one another should be wonderful, should be great, should always reflect what God has done for us. Verse 21, Ephesians 5, 21 of what we read. There's another commandment here. It is a command. It is not maybe. It is not optional. 21 says, Submitting yourselves one to another. How? In the fear of God. Not in the fear of man. Not in the fear of of my father, my brother, my sister, my manager. God said this is what we're supposed to do. So may God help us to maintain what he has already done for you, for me. What else has he made available to you, to me, to us all? He says, we we'll go back to the beginning of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 and following. It says, let's do it from maybe, I think I'll do it from verse 10 to get a, uh, well, we can start from uh, verse 11. Uh, Okay, let's do, let's do from 10. Ephesians 1, 10 and following says that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he, Christ or God, may gather together in one all things. In Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him. Then 11. What does it say? In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him God who worked all things after the counsel of his own will verse 12 that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. 13. In whom ye also trusted. After that, he, ye, all of us, ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that, ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until 
the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Do we see what God is saying? This is just, it's very wonderful and exciting. But what God has done for you, for us all, he has said, again, going back to verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in him all things in Christ. It is because of Christ. So God will gather all of us, gather everything, all because of Christ. Where? How? Both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in God, in Christ. So when the time comes, those who are in heaven and those who are on earth, God is going to unite us all. How? All because of what he's telling us. In whom? In Christ. Also, we have obtained an inheritance. You have an inheritance in heaven. I have an inheritance in heaven. And we know Christ will come and create a new world in which there will not be any sin. We know that, right? So this world is going to be remade, re, re, it's going to be redone. And it's there in the scriptures. Let's continue. He says, being predestined. What, is, what word do we use in this world nowadays? When we need something from the store, the bank, whatever. You are pre-approved. That's what it's called, predestined. We have been predestined. It's been done ahead. It's been done long, 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 long time ago. Before we were born. Christ has predestined us. According to the purpose of him, of Christ, of God. Who worked all things after the counsel of his own will. It is out of God's pleasure, God's will, that he has granted us that relationship. How? Verse 12 reminds us that we should be to the praise of his glory. God did all of this so that we'll be able to praise him and worship him. And when we are praising him and worshiping him, do you have an opportunity to be fighting to be angry with your brother, sister, father, mother, at any uh, relationship? No. But of course, there will be, as we all know, heaven and there will be hell. And God has already granted us that entrance. We are predestined, pre-approved. If predestined is a big word, pre-approved. Pre we know it. We use it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, all Christians. Once we trust in Christ, we are pre-approved for eternity, for eternal life. 13. Who? In whom? In Christ. We also, you also, trusted. You had faith in Christ. Faith in God. After that, we heard 
the word of truth. When we heard the gospel, the truth of the gospel, and we believed it, we have accepted it, God now gave us that relationship, transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. When we heard the word of truth, which is the gospel of our salvation, of your salvation, in whom also, after we heard about it, what do we do? We believed. When you hear the gospel and you believe and you follow it and you accept it, you've been sealed with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that means you are following the pattern of sound doctrine. You are following God's words. So, it's a wonderful testimony God is giving to us. Verse 14. It's reminding us again which is the earnest of our inheritance. What does it mean? What's earnest? Which is a guarantee. When we have been pre approved for some credit card, house, whatever it is, it means we have that guarantee. Of receiving what we requested for. In this case, inheritance. Verse 14 again, which is the guarantee of our inheritance or the earnest, as the King James calls it. The earnest, the assurance, the guarantee of our inheritance. Until the redemption of the purchased possessions of all those who have been redeemed, of all those who have been called Christians, that's what God is telling us. Until the purpose, it is all because of God's ways. The purchase, the possessions, How? All have to be unto the praise of His glory. The glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How? We, we just heard it. Amen and amen. Amen. 